Uh, good morning, I'm Janet Swigler, and I'm delighted to be here and to have my exhibit in the Millican Art Gallery. I started quilting about seven years ago, though I had grown up sewing since I was about age eight. And as I was thinking about getting ready for this uh, talk, I realized I started sewing by hand uh, when I was about eight. I also started piano lessons when I was about eight. And both of those activities have stayed with me until I've reached this age. And uh, one of the benefits of those was I was able to use my hands a lot, but especially with the piano, there was an element of discipline. If I was going to improve, I had to practice regularly. And so that um, study led into being a music educator, and that was my profession. But I could tell at the end of my um, professional career, I was getting antsy. During the summer, I would take time to create small pieces, but then once I got into the schoolyard, I didn't have the time or energy to do that. Uh, so as soon as I retired, I was able to enroll in the uh, classes that Nancy Crow teaches up at a place called The Barn in Baltimore, Ohio. And she is a woman who has been instrumental in defining quilts as art. That has been one of her life's missions. And uh, she is, in fact, a master of the medium through the Smithsonian Ren Renwick Gallery. Uh, so I walked into my first class, just as it's so fortuitous, she was starting her first class in a series of 18. And I have not taken those consecutively, but I have had no interest in studying with another teacher. <clears throat> the projects that I was working on before I retired <clears throat> were small, had a lot of surface design, and were very, very, very carefully um, thought about. And in Nancy's classes, they're all about working intuitively. You start to cut, you might have an idea, but you don't really know what's going to come out of it until you have reached the completion of your project. And so those, uh, I feel, I call it like a slow improvisation. It's nothing quick movement like you ha might have in jazz, but as you make your cuts, as you make your color decisions, those things um, feed into each other and affect the final result, and at some point you have to say, okay, that's, that's enough, it is finished. Um, so one of the benefits of working with Nancy is that it's my art education. Um, I've realized that there are many, many parallels with my music education, uh, as far as form, balance, repetition, staccato, legato, crescendo, tone color, and all of those disciplines are um, principles in music also transfer over to the art, so I feel like I have uh, an added bonus of the, the musical discipline. Uh, but with Nancy, I really started to, um, instead of training my ear, I was more training my eye, and I was starting to see the difference in color value, in color, uh, in proportion, in the quality of a line. The first class I, I took with her was, uh, everything was cut with a ruler and using a rotary cutter on a mat that I imagine you'll get a picture of later. And then she said after the first week, okay, put that away and we're just going to be cutting freehand. Uh, and when you're using a razor sharp rolling blade, um, you have to learn how to use that. So that, that was a new experience for me. Uh, Nancy is a very demanding teacher. Uh, she will tell you exactly what she thinks, whether it uh, is positive or negative. And I can remember sometimes during classes just going, Nancy, do you think I should still be here? She said, well, that is entirely up to you. But if you want to keep going, I'm fine to have you here. But she was just going to give you honest critiques of your work. And uh, that's, that's what I wanted from a teacher. So every year, I would go back one or two times for classes. Um, classes I was supposed to take in the spring have been delayed until late fall, and hopefully we'll be able to meet then. Uh, it's very intense work for two weeks. I remember the first time I went up, I thought, I'm going to have, oh, lunch is free and I'll start late. Oh, what will I do in the morning? What will I do in the evenings? Well, the barn opened at 7. We had meals. A chef was there for us. And we worked until the barn closed at 9 or 10 at night. So I had no problem filling my time <laughs> with any of uh, my time up there. So my first classes, I realized that um, I really needed a huge, huge range of color from the whites all the way to the blacks. I um, 
learned how to see the difference in whites, how to see the difference in grays, in blacks even. That was all, all very, very new to me. Um, Nancy has this um, principle that she saw, says flat and glowing. And there's a couple of pieces where I have put two greens together. And it's very easy to see which one is kind of glowing and which one is rather flat. And it's working with that principle of putting those kinds of colors together. Um, a flat piece, completely flat, will be just draining and just kind of disappear. A completely bright piece, piece will be overwhelming. But to get that balance of what's going to come forward, what's going to move backward, and provide interest in a piece is um, something that I'm still working on. Uh, I'm working on finding a quality of line. When I look at earlier work, I see mistakes, but then I realize that mistakes are um, great learning tools. Um, sometimes they're hard to see and admit, but or have pointed out to me, <laughs> but I realize that they really are a great way to learn. Um, so thinking about my goals, I, I don't have real strict goals for myself. Um, I don't want to make 50 quilts, one quilt a year. I've realized that through my life, I have often paid attention to doors that have opened to me. And I really, as I work through, want to maintain that ability to notice when a door has opened. And one of those was when I had a chance to study with Nancy. Uh, so with the, my coming years, uh, I have, in fact, I've decided not to take the master level class with her because I want to be able to focus on what feeds the rest of my life. Um, so I want to make sure that I stay attent attentive and observant and realize what other opportunities come out of my way. I want to keep honing my skills. I want to keep getting better with color. Um, one thing that I've really enjoyed working on is working in a series, and there are six pieces that are shown here in the gallery right now. The most current one is a, a small piece that's right behind me. And in that piece, I was starting to work with a new family of colors. At one point, I realized I was working very um, very little with oranges and reds and yellows. <clears throat> in fact, my initial stacks that I took to the barn were lots of blues and purples, and I found myself using them very little. So I felt uh, the piece, one of them is sticks and stripes that I, I would like to point out to you, is heavily invested in orange and yellows and whites and reds. And that was a, that was a major breakthrough for me to start um, seeing those colors and using them in a very simple pattern. Um, another breakthrough for me was in a piece that I'll point out to you um, called Room for Magic. And I had been cutting everything pretty much in a straight line. And I heard another woman say, oh my gosh, I just cut a huge curve. And we're talking about something that ranges about four feet in a curve. And um, I thought, well, I think I'll try that. And so sure enough, it was quite eye-opening to, to use that great um, bodily movement and to just notice how free that was. And then, once again, to see how that ripple effect carried on. Uh, another lesson for me was that I was going to have to use my fabric. Um, it wasn't like using a piece of construction paper, but it was fabric that cost a lot more money than I was used to spending and just going, oh, that was the wrong color or that was a bad mistake. I think I just need to um, get beyond that. Um, initially, I was working in black and white so that I would get my design down and get my proportions correct. I work on about an eight by eight foot uh, flannel covered wall. So everything is it's just a big flannel board. I can just pop the material up there and just move it around, which is nice compared to painting. Um, so I can see where I want things to be. Of course, when I told Nancy that I worked on one eight-foot wall, she says, well, when are you going to renovate the house and give yourself a bigger studio? Because she works in a studio the size of a barn. And I said, well, I don't know that that's going to happen anytime soon. So I would work in black and white to get my figures down, to get my... Um, 
proportions down to get my ground, whether that was going to be black or white, and then move into color. But now I find that I'm using, I'm picking my palette and then start to figure out where the values are going to be. Uh, my fabric is all arranged <clears throat> by color family, but also ranging from the lightest to the darkest within each family. So um, even though I've picked up my palette ahead of time, I find myself struggling sometimes when I get in the middle of it. I, I realize that seams are going to have to be ripped and pieces are going to have to be replaced just because a color is not working. Um, the last big piece in Nothing Stays the Same, the series Nothing Stays the Same, I really changed the palette and went to an extremely light one. Initially, I was thinking of going with a very, very light palette, but I couldn't give up the colors that I wanted to use, so that, that's how that one developed. So I have a discipline of uh, daily Tai Chi practice, and I know that that has benefited my art practice because um, it's all about discipline, it's about paying attention, it's about being very much in the moment. And that, so that has also affected how much time I spend with my quilts because I realize there are other things that I want to do besides being in my studio sewing. I do piece all of my work myself, um, but I work on just a, a household machine and some of the pieces have just gotten too big or take more time than I want to spend quilting them. So I have hired a woman who does um, very, very good quilting. And I thought the straight lines, the parallel lines that I asked her to quilt would be some of the easiest, but she said, no, they're really some of the more difficult ones to do because every time she has to realign the quilting machine, she has to line up the straight lines exactly. So I appreciate the amount of work that she puts, puts into it. So there have been some challenges along the way. Um, initially, it was difficult to set aside time <clears throat> to do the quilting, to do the work. But then when I realized, I, when I was at the barn, how intense the time could be, I realized if I was going to um, succeed or make progress, I was going to have to set aside to do so. Um, challenges were using the amounts of fabric that I was going to have to use, um, mostly for mistakes. You know, other things I could, I could deal with, but uh, the fabric was a major element in the conservation of it. Uh, sometimes I'm almost too meticulous. I'm not to the point where if I procrastinate, I'll do it by rolling all the lint off my work wall. So I've seen some women do that at the barn. <clears throat> but I have to go, okay, that's enough. Just, just let that go. Um, one of the challenges at first was to color outside the lines. Um, I was raised in a military family. Uh, my dad was a fighter pilot, so that meant he was extremely disciplined and everything was very orderly. Uh, we moved a lot. Those transitions in my life were seamless, um, but they, and they also gave me a wonderful view of the world. Um, but everything had a place and everything had to be in its place. So when I was starting to work with this fabric, I realized that I didn't have to make straight lines. The lines didn't have to be parallel. And that was um, one discipline that, that I'm really developing. It. But the challenge at first was to let myself kind of loosen up with it. Um, another one was letting the surprises happen. Uh, as I'm looking at one piece, I can see that I thought I had matched two colors, put them side by side, intending them to match, but they don't quite match. And just going, well, that's perfectly fine. Uh, a major point was coming back from classes one time. Everybody at the barn had gotten sick. <clears throat> and uh, so I came home and I was sick for two weeks, which was not like me. And I thought, what is going on here? And I said, there's something I can't stomach. And as I worked through it, I realized I had to separate myself from Nancy. And she, as I said, is a very, very influential teacher but I had to start trusting my own work. Um, so the piece I mentioned before, Sticks and Stripes, where I was using the orange and yellows and whites, she absolutely loved that piece. And that was the first piece I produced after starting to trust myself again. Well, I produced a second piece in that series, 
and she didn't like it at all. Whereas another art teacher at the barn said it was fabulous. So that was a huge lesson for me to accept my work, knowing that everybody else was going to have different opinions, but I was the one who was going to be the ultimate uh, decision maker in what I, what I approved of. So as far as destinations, uh, I, I think in some point I would like to start working with recycled fabrics. I'd like to start working with something beyond solids um, to add in some prints. Right now I feel like I'm in a very pure um, element of expression and I'm not letting myself get distracted by prints. Um, but that's something I'll probably work on <clears throat> on a smaller scale. I thought I might like to do more surface design, but I don't think that's my choice now. And I don't know that I'll spend the time dyeing fabrics. A lot of people do that and come up with magnificent colors, but right now I'm satisfied with, with what I'm working on. Um, I want to keep appreciating um, the sim simple things. I don't want to be simplistic, but having been spent four years in Japan, that aesthetic has really influenced how I look at life. I find that I'm really drawn to line. Um, the idea of wabi-sabi, the perfection in imperfection, the beauty in imperfection. So I'm looking at, at simplicity of design instead of complicated, um, dense. I, I want to have that openness. I've it's called uh, ground in Nancy's classes, and, uh, but I've been very conscious of the space between. Uh, and part of that is my life uh, definition that you know everything can't be lived on the peak. We have to have those valleys to appreciate the peaks. So I think that's one of my goals, to show my appreciation for the simplicity and uh, also to keep expressing my interpretation of life. Um, definitely drawn to nature, being outside, um, which is where I practice my Tai Chi, and all of that input um, definitely influences me, and I want that to show in my work. Uh, most of the people, I, I'll give a percentage of all my work um, sales to environmental organizations, so even though I'm not out working in the field, I'm still um, trying to make a difference in the environmental efforts. So I feel very fortunate that I have come into this medium. I love working with fabric. I love the quality in my hand. I can entertain myself for hours in a fabric store. Um, so now to have reached this point where I can artistically express myself and not just have my sewing be a, a practical, useful tool, um, I. I'm very, very pleased that I'm able to make arts and that I've discovered a teacher who I greatly value, um, but also that I'm beginning to honor my own journey.